Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining so much. I'm so uh, happy to be here. And um, I can, first of all, have to say the most hugest thank you to KHS America for um, putting this on, my dear friend Rick DeYoung for jumping in and setting this up for all of you. And of course, uh, also a huge thank you to my dear friend Elisa Jones and uh, the International Music Education Summit for uh, their support and hosting all of this for all of you. Um, I'm so happy to get the call from Rick and be able to talk. So today, um, I've done many webinars over the past two weeks, and I thought for, for you, the students and, and directors that are watching today and re-watching later, I thought what I would do is kind of take you through what I do as a musician um, and as a teacher, uh, just to play music and use technology. So we're all sitting at home, we're all quarantined, as they say, and um, what what is uh, a huge opportunity for us now is that we can play music and experience music, maybe in ways we've never uh, had before, maybe never had time to, but let's take advantage of this opportunity of being at home and playing music. Now, unfortunately, and then truly unfortunately, we're not with our ensemble friends. We're not in class, and I, I miss it. My ensembles are canceled, I get it. Um, but, so now the transition is how do we make music with ourselves? How do we you know, be able to play, find music to play for fun? How does technology help? So I'm just gonna go through a bunch of ideas that of what I would do. I'm gonna share and demonstrate as I go. I am taking a, a little bit of a risk here because I am gonna actually do a lot of the stuff live right here. So anytime you try to record and do this audio stuff back and forth, while also on a webinar that's recorded to an audio, you are, you are asking for uh, anything to happen. But I figured if we're gonna talk technology, we should show it. So um, I'm gonna start and just jump right in and I'm gonna take you through grabbing your instrument or singing and uh, how to start making music right away and then how to get into composing music and where that goes. I have a whole list of things to show you. I have no slides, this is all just music making. So um, let's begin. The first thing I'm gonna show you is Soundtrap. It's a web-based uh, digital audio workstation. Uh, you can do uh, what I'm about to do with, with really any digital audio workstation. If you have a Mac with GarageBand, um, if you have another one like Studio One or Pro Tools or Logic or anything like that, you can use. But a Soundtrap is great, it's online. Uh, a lot of schools can do subscriptions and I know that Soundtrap's offering extended um, support for distance learning so you can get this at a school which makes it really easy to collaborate. So I really prefer Soundtrap. It's web-based so you can use it on any device. So I'm gonna flip over my screen and I'm just gonna show you uh, basic ways to just start playing your instrument and recording yourself as you go. So let me share my screen and I'm gonna share this and ta-da. Now you're seeing a screen with me in the lower corner. All right, so let's get going. Now, this is just an empty Soundtrap file. I have a Soundtrap account and I'm just all set up here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just be able to record myself. You know, playing is great, but we have to be our own teachers now. So I'm just gonna add a new track. And you know, there's some basic uh, settings. I'm gonna kind of turn maybe the reverb down just because I'm in an echoey room. And I'm just gonna maybe record myself playing a scale. Um, metronome's off for now, just kind of get, get a hint of this. Now, I have my little trumpet here. I am going to play with a cup mute because trumpets are a little bit loud, so I don't want to overpower your ears, or overpower the recording. Uh, normally, I would step back and um, set my audio settings for my computer lower because the trumpet's louder, but, the sin but since I want to be able to talk to you, I'm going to do it this way. So um, that's why I'm using a cut mute, kind of a long, very trumpet player explanation of why I'm using a mute, right? Uh, so let's hit record. Um, I'm not using headphones, so it's going to go ahead and turn this off. And you can just get, see, get ready. And if you're just going to record, you can just kind of let it go. Let's play an F scale. Uh -huh. So I think the important thing here is that just be able to always, I would I would play and record yourself at home using something really simple because then you can listen back and you can practice being your own teacher, right? And just transition into modes. When you're playing, you are on stage and you're giving it your all. And then you can put your teacher hat on and you could just go, okay. Uh -huh. 
And immediately, you say, look, you can even see the shape of this waveform. You see how I got quieter as I went higher, and so I should try to keep the same full tone? I'd want to record this again right away and keep the same full tone as I go up to the upper register instead of getting softer. So I can already see some issues right here that I can immediately fix. Now, um, what if we did something where we start recording with ourselves? I'm going to delete this. And now I'm going to record a drone for myself. So I'm going to now start thinking about how can I be my own teacher? So let's take our instrument. You can see, you could do this, but I'm going to start recording again. And um, if you have a tuner, it'd be great to have your phone up and put a tuner on. Uh... And you can hold that as steady and nice as long as you can hold it. And then let's add another recording track. And now I can play my scale and tune to that drone. Very common, good warm up to use. So let's go ahead and try that. And I'll just let the drone get going. It's telling me to get ready here. So as you can hear, I'm going to play my scale a little slower. I'm going to try to get each interval in tune. And immediately now, you're your own teacher, right? So just playing, recording, listening back, this is great to do at home. And when you get something great that happens, share it with a friend. That's really important, right? Um, so you could do all those type of things as well. The other thing you could do that's a very common warm-up that I know we do in, in band class is maybe um, you know do the, do the scale in thirds technique. So I'll show you. Uh, we do this. I know a lot of your, your teachers probably do this in class. So I'm going to play the scale, and I'll show you how to show you what I'm talking about. I'm just going to play the scale just in half notes. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and turn the metronome on for this part because it would be a lot easier. Oh. I can just hit spacebar to stop that. I actually did not need the second track, so I'm going to delete it. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to start uh, the beginning of my scale on the third note of my previous self scale. And we can kind of do this chordal layer thing that we kind of do in class sometimes. So I'll go ahead and let the first little bit go past. <laughs> You get the point. Now, you ideally should be using headphones, right? Always use headphones. I'm not because I need you to hear what I'm doing on the webinar, but you should always, always even use basic headphones because I'm, you know, so you don't re record the metronome and get any latency like that. So <clears throat> now let's take this up a notch, right? One of the fun, fun, fun things about recording here is that, you know, the metronome is great and you should always practice with the metronome. But I'll be the first to admit sometimes metronomes are not that exciting. However, you know what is exciting is the library of drum loops available. So now, what if we took uh, in loops, and, and every DIW has this, Soundtrap is great about it, there's a whole loop section. I've just kind of filtered by drums, and we can pick one. I'll tell you what, bread and butter, whatever that is. So I'm just gonna drag this in, and now, I have a way cooler metronome, right? The cool thing about Soundtrap is it'll time it out to this metronome, this tempo down here. So you can just change the tempo and have it work out. So we could take uh, maybe any articulation exercise you normally do or any fun thing like that that you uh, want to play. I, know, artic I think articulated exercises are fun. I'm not sure about you, but you know, I'm a trumpet player. I'm very strict about my warm up, and these are the best ways to warm up. Uh, the other beautiful thing about this as an instrumentalist is it forces you to rest. You know, so often in home practice, we just play through stuff so fast and we get tired so fast because we're not taking those rests. But when you play, listen, play, listen, it actually forces you to have an equal amount of play and rest. And it works both sides of your musicianship, right? Your performance side and your, your analytical side. 
So now um, I'm going to turn the metronome off because I don't need it because I have this drum beat as a metronome. And now I'm going to record myself and let's just record enable this track. And I'll play um, some very common trumpety thing that I'll figure out in two measures here. Uh, I'm going to let the, the beat get going. So now, common little uh, etude, this can be any type of etude you want, and you can listen back very carefully, and you can hear exactly how your articulation lines up with the metronome or the drum beat. Right, and you can even hear I still got a little bit ahead on those intervals, da, 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 and then I kind of like realized it. You can even tell if you were to zoom in, you could probably tell really, really slightly that my note is just ahead of the metronome. So, lots of cool ways to practice here, right? Um, you can do exercises, you can do patterns. Um, the other cool thing to do is, and this is something you can share with your friends. If you have an etude in your book, if you have a piece from your your class, if you have something you're singing. Or, or you want to make a, um, a pattern with it, you can actually create a practice structure with drum beats, right? So you could take this, I mean, right now, this of course is an eight measure drum beat, but maybe there's a 16 bar phrase. So you could extend this out, uh, usually just drag this out to 16 bars. Maybe there's a B section and you want to add a new drum beat that has a little different uh, style to cover the B section. Maybe it's softer, so you can do that as well. In addition, as an, as an extension for more advanced folks, you can also actually add um, loops that are not drums. You could add piano and other things. So you can actually add in other sounds as well. Um, and then these will, these will show you what key they're in. So you'll have to match the, the key of the, the, the melodic line to what you're playing. That is a little more advanced, but you know what? It's very well worth it. And if you can if you get into that, that's super great. Or maybe your teacher or directors can, can set that up for students. They go in and set something. And, you know, if it's band, it's B flat. If it's orchestra, it's D. Uh, if it's if it's choir, it's somewhere between a real key. Sorry, just kidding, choir singers. Uh, but you can set up whatever you want. So lots of great ways to do this. If you're looking for a way to just get involved with your instrument and technology, just start playing, listen to yourself, and seeing what cool things you can find. I promise you I've done this before. I'll start playing, I'll do this, and I'll start you know, uh, creating little sections of my music. You might even compose a whole song just with little snippets of your playing and other sounds as well. So have fun, grab a digital art workstation, and, and really, and really get, get going there. So the next thing I want to show is I want to jump over to music notation. So I'm going to jump over to Note Flight now. Uh, Note Flight is a, a web-based music notation editor. And it is, uh, you know, you can do uh, most everything I'm talking about, most uh, most everything in other music notation softwares. Uh, there are some uh, unique features to NoteFlight that are also um, available to any school through June 30th with all the content and everything inside of NoteFlight Learn. Uh, you have access to a lot of great things. Um, so the first thing you have access to in NoteFlight is all of these content libraries. And, you know, you can uh, we can follow up later about how to get access. But... Once you're in here, there's, there's full concert band music, pop music, choir music. I mean, you could just pull this up and start playing and recording right away. I went to band. I looked through some of the band repertoire earlier, and I found a fanfare for the common man. And I thought that was really cool. And it's down here um, at, in the library. And I'll go ahead and uh, it's a grade three arrangement uh, by Robert Longfield. So you can pull these up. You can um, uh you can, of course, uh, copy these into your account and use them. This is the full band score, but what I've gone ahead and done for you is I have uh, already isolated this down just to the three trumpet parts. So, and I'll, you know, and there's lots of tutorials on using note flight, so I'll just kind of give you some ideas, and then you can go see the other webinars and information on this. But I've basically taken the three trumpet parts and just narrowed those down from the full score, right? And so you can access the full score. You can isolate your individual parts. So I've already done that piece to kind of get going here. So now I can actually play this and just and play music and play parts of band music that I've never normally played before. Uh, but the cool thing about Note Flight Learn is you can record as well. 
So just like in Soundtrap, you can record in NoteFlight. So I hit the record button and you know there is a metronome option. It's defaulting to on and uh, it will mute the part. So I'm gonna go ahead and just maybe record a little bit of this and see what that sounds like. And I know this is not the original key. This is the grade three band key. low notes in a cup mute, am I right? Trumpet player, right? Making excuses right away. Oh, I was tired. I didn't get my warm up. My chops are kind of sore. You know, I had some salty chips, feeling a little swollen, you know, same stuff. So now we can actually listen back to our recording here. Let's go ahead and start maybe in this measure and hear what we got. <laughs> I'm being careful not to play too loud in the mic. You see, I get a little quiet here. Um, you see this G right here did not have the full body of sound that the, the Ds before it had. So I would immediately re-record that and try to keep the same sound. Anytime you record and you see like a waveform pattern, which is what these are, uh, uh, these pinkish uh, lines are, you can always see, you know, immediately visual and audio feedback about how your plan is. And you can do this right into any note flight score. And there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things here. So you can play this right away. Other cool things. I have like these little arrangements that I've, I've pulled together. Um, this is actually a, a something that was on a, a MIDI. So I took a MIDI file and I just took a little uh, three part Bach fugue and I made it for three trumpets. And you can even like record yourself playing all three parts, right? So you can go into record mode on anything. Make sure you use the selector to select the part you want to record. And we can do kind of the same um, recording option here. Let's see if this works. <laughs> You can see it'll play back the other parts. You can, of course, turn that on or off if you want to, and it will come up as playing. So now I can go in, hit record, and you know what? I can start trumpet two, and I will actually turn off uh, the trumpet three part for now so I don't hear the other part right now just so it doesn't. If I had headphones on, I absolutely would play along with myself, but I'm not going to do it for the webinar. So I've set it to record just a bar before I need to come in, and... Now I can just layer it. I can make a recording of just myself playing. And I can go on and on. Oh, I need to keep going. Sorry. But you can imagine now we can go through and actually start where all three trumpets come in, and you could actually record a trio with yourself. So Find duets, record. The beautiful thing is you can even record uh, or compose a part for yourselves or your friends. So if one person finds a duet or trio, you could share this with other, other students, share this with your friends, and you could actually uh, maybe each record your own part. One person can record it, save it, send it to the next person. They can record their part. You can do all of this right in NoteFlight, which is really, really cool and fun. I'll show you a little trick about note fly recording. Let's say, I mean, I would never, but let's say I missed a note and I wanted to maybe re-record just this measure because I did something weird. You can actually punch in in note fly, which is kind of cool. So what that means is you can, um, like I'll show you, just say I wanted to record this measure again. I'm just going to tap just the measure I want to punch into and hit record, and I'll show you. You can kind of cheat a little bit. So now I've kind of re-recorded that little section. And if you notice, it'll tell you on the trumpet two part uh, that there's actually um, 
info, you see the segment over here. So it shows that I did one segment and then there's a punch in 18 seconds to 23 seconds. And there's another little clip and it actually just punched in right for me, which is kind of cool. So uh, you should record it all in one take, right? And you can also do sight reading challenges, like force yourself to only get all the way through in one take, that type of thing, which is super, really, really viable. So um, I want to keep going. There's just lots of other things you can do here. I love pop songs and I love, um, I actually love musical theater. It's kind of my uh, obs minor obsession. And if anyone knows me, it's major obsession. Um, in fact, before we started, I think Elisa was whistling a tune and I immediately recognized it from your dear Evan Hansen and I started whistling the second half because it's still, a, I love musical theater so much. But I want to go back into the, the libraries of Note Flight because one of the coolest things that you could get doing right away is that you can go in and go in this pop library. And again, anyone who wants access to this through June 30th can have this free unlimited access. Just email info at noteflight.com. Uh, but once you're in here, there's all these pop songs, right? And these are these have been selected to be age appropriate. Um, these are all you know, uh, fine for students. Um, and I've just pulled on, I forget I pulled one up, something like, um, where is it? California Dreaming, right? I'm actually going to close some of my other tabs just to save uh, some space here. Now, so I've pulled up something like California Dreaming. Now, this is what we call in the publishing world a PVG, a piano vocal guitar. It's like a standard lead sheet, but it's a single line melody with a piano. So this, these can be suddenly an instrument solo with piano accompaniment for any instrument. Yes, Elisa, it was waving through a window. Exactly. Um, I was I was doing like this in my audio to kind of show you. Uh, so um, parts. Uh, you can go in the parts panel of Note Flight and you can change these parts to anything. So the universal symbol for edit is the pen, right? So let's say I want to make this for trumpet. I'll just search for a trumpet. Ta-da. There it is. And then you have to just remember uh, to we can toggle between concert pitch. Most notation editors, I'd say every notation uh, software defaults to concert pitch because people don't want to, have to think about transpositions as they're writing. But you can turn that on and off. Um, yes, yeah, so just to clarify, anyone can have access to Note Flight Learn for free with all content now through June 30th. So everything I'm showing is available to anyone who wants it, no charge, no questions asked. Um, so I just turned off concert pitch, which is really important because trumpet obviously is a transposing instrument. Now, let's say that I turn off concert pitch and suddenly I'm like, wow, this is kind of tricky. Uh, you can also transpose it. So again, um, now it's in kind of, it's in a, a different key here. Um, but what I could do is I could change this to uh, transpose this whole thing down if I'd like. So let's say uh, D major is gonna be a tricky key for a trumpet player, we wanna get it down to C. I can uh, maybe select the whole piece and I could just go transpose this. Again, all of these pieces of music are available. And again, depending on your level, uh, directors, you may wanna transpose these for your students in advance, but what better time than now to just show students, like teach students how to do this. Make a quick video. You wanna go down in major second, I'm gonna take the key signature with it and now, I've put this down in major second. So now the trumpet part is in a nice, easy, comfortable sort of A minor. Uh, the piano part's in B flat. And now I've just created this trumpet play along. You can choose to keep the chord symbols or not. There's guitar chords on here if you really want to. Uh, in formatting, there's uh, show chord diagrams. I'm gonna turn that off because I don't really wanna see guitar chord diagrams right here. So they'll kind of leave up here, but now Think of all the pop songs you can learn to play on your instrument. And obviously, if you're a vocalist, you can sing these. And tell you what, if you're not a vocalist, but you want to be, just sing away. It's, your, it's you with your music, with your computer, so you can try your hand at singing, try your hand at recording. If you don't like it, you can delete it. It's, it's all about just having fun with music. So um, I'll just play along for now. I've shown you recording enough, so let's just, I'll kind of show you what this looks like. So you can hit play. You can also record along 
if I was playing, I'd probably want to like turn off the, the piano part. The other cool thing here is that you can show and hide parts. So if you don't need to see the piano line, I can just hide this for a second and I can make it just a single line. So now I've made a, a really quick lead sheet with chords and stuff, right? Looks like we need to kind of nudge all of these down, which I'll do later. But now the piano will still play. But now if you go into record mode, you can see that like you can maybe turn uh, turn off the trumpet part. And I can now basically hear the piano. You know, and you'll hear the little melodies in the top line of the piano. But you could just play along and have fun. Now let's do an extension here. Everyone wants to... Uh, learn to improvise, right? The easiest way to start improvising, look, play music for fun. Students on this, I cannot emphasize enough. Play music for fun. There is nothing you can do wrong with your instrument or your voice at home with music. There is nothing wrong you can do. You just play for joy, right? Play music for the joy of making music and play it for your families. But what if I wanted to start improvising? A beautiful way to start improvising is through composition. Take an existing melody. Uh, we'll talk about how to write melodies in a second, but I want to start with existing like this. Uh, having songs you know really helps because you already sort of know the chords and stuff. So now take an existing melody and just start playing it and then start tinkering, right? Play a little extra, play a little extra. And look, there's nothing wrong because you're just trying stuff out. I personally like doing this with, with recording. So if I play something great and I forget what it is, I can go back and hear it which is also super valuable. Um, so I might do that. So let's go and just record a little bit. And let's just, I'm going to start playing. I'm going to add some stuff. I'm just going to improvise. And I'm going to show you how to take a simple melody and turn it into an improvisation. So just like that, just start playing, play a little more, play a little more, have fun. If you do something you don't like, erase it. If you do something you like, go back and listen to it. Now, let's say you played something really cool, right? You recorded it. You're like, I like that idea. I like what I did. So now let's, you could take the same musical score. You have your recording. Now watch this. I'm going to go through and um, it's okay, note flight on it. I'm going to take away all the notes that were there. And I'm just going to leave my recording. So what am I doing? Well, I could be making a transcription exercise for another student. I could be making a transcription exercise for yourself. So now here's a fun game. If you can play it, can you notate it, right? One easy way to learn to like compose is to have a music, compose is about having a musical idea and being able to write it down. And in just like language, most of the times we have a lot more ideas that we can get on paper. I'll tell you right now, being at home and having to just communicate uh, virtually and with text, if a genie popped out of a lamp right now and gave me three wishes, my first wish uh, would probably be to cure uh, coronavirus for everyone, I mean, obviously. But uh, my second wish would be to be able to type as fast as I can think. Because it's like we always have these great ideas and we just can't get them out fast enough. So check this out. I'm just deleting all this. And now I have a fun game. I think it's fun of like rewriting what you did. So now we can play. Uh, what am I, where's my recording? Oh, you know what? Uh, this is user error. This is John not knowing how to use NoteFly. Let me turn the trumpet part back on. So it'll play what I wrote. And uh, you can actually hear. And so I can go back, so I can notate that. And you can hear in the background. And you can hear everything, right? So I don't know how to even notate that. I probably would just put a squiggly line there, but uh, anyway. 
You see, so you can play, have fun, have an idea and start composing. And that's really the idea here, right? You can also just take this, take anything existing and compose your own melody to it, right? So that's another really fun thing to get going. If you wanna just take, so now let's transition to uh, composing, right? Let's go back to, a, to our libraries and let's find something else. Maybe you wanna start composing. Melody is the easiest way to start. Um, so one thing I like to do is you can take this piano library and um, you can grab, oh, it's Bob Seeger too, of course. Uh, but you can grab uh, something classical, something, ooh, clowns on unicycles. I mean, it doesn't get funner than that, right? Um, this is not a good example for what I'm going to show, but I think clowns on unicycles is pretty fun right now. So let's go and find, um, tell you what, easy piano is probably the way to go. So I'm going to grab something simple. And what you can do, Oh, this is a good one. It's actually in 3-8, so that's a fun one. Um, you can take, like, you know, start learning to compose. Try your hand by taking something existing. I'm going to do the same technique I did before, and I'm going to delete this melody. I'm not even going to look at this melody. I don't want to know what it is. Bye. So now I can just practice my hand at composing a melody along with an existing bass line. <laughs> Right, and so it gives you some structure. And so the, the beautiful thing about composing is you want to do, uh, you want to take like elements at a time, right? No one expects you to be able to start just writing a masterpiece right away. Uh, so it's all about different elements, just like learning an instrument, right? There's breathing, there's airflow, there's tonguing, there's fingering, there's phrasing. You have all these different elements. So the beautiful thing about taking something like this and getting started is that you have a form, you have a harmonic structure, you have texture. You just have to come up with a melody and you can try anything you want. So take something like this, go in, add a melody, see what that, see what that sounds like. You know, um, you can tie it over to another note. I'm gonna do an accent. I'm gonna do a tie, repeat the note, repeat the note, and you wanna do this, but then all of a sudden I don't want to do a tie here because that actually is an um, so I'm just kind of playing, you know. Now I know it's gonna go to a G major here, so maybe I want to go up to D. And now, whoops, hello. And now we can have a little melody. Right? Or maybe you can try something that sounds kind of cool. So maybe let's try, I wonder what it would sound like if I did a D here. And maybe I want to go up to an F craziness, right? And then I want to go E, D, C. Um, and maybe we want to resolve to C in the next measure. So we'll do something fun like uh, this. And I'm just kind of writing a note flight. Again, I know I'm going quick. I'm not trying to make it a note flight demo. I'm trying to make it a fun idea demo. And you can look at all the rest. Right? So I'm writing a little melody. And then if I want to, I can try playing it. Uh, however you want. You'd have to transpose it for trumpet, but you can go ahead and play through that. Have fun. Now, um, let's talk about now going straight from that into just writing your own melody like from scratch, right? So let's go back into Note Flight and let's just say now I want to compose. Uh, the reason I kept this for later is because so often we think we have to start writing and creating music online by like a blank slate, right? That's just not how it is. Like most artists don't just start with a you know blank and figure it out. We we learn by taking. And there's beautiful stories of Bach learning to compose by stealing, you know, like at night, taking all the, the books from and like handwriting and like really just like redictating all the compositions, learning how music puts together. That's how we learn language, right? We learn to speak and communicate long before we learn how the letter names work. So no one says you have to start composing by like figuring out. You can just take ideas. Um one thing, if you're already an if you're already a musician and you're playing, I mean, we're all musicians. And if you're already an instrumentalist or singer, and just you want to work on ideas, start with your instrument. Just start with how you're feeling, right? Like you're sitting around. It's kind of rainy here. It's cold in Boston today. Um, so maybe I just want to kind of play. And you can doodle. Pick a scale. Um, I'll pick. Uh, I've already played F major. I'll do uh, a D major or something like that. So I can just kind of play. Uh -huh. You know what I like?
like it a 16th. I'm just, I'm literally, I'm not prepared for anything right now. I'm just playing. I'm like, that's kind of cool. So let me go in note flight and let me see what that looks like. So now um, I'll do it as eighth notes. Um, and I'm just typing the notes. Let's see what that sounds like. You know what? That's cool. So now I'm going to run with it. Now at this point, you could have an idea, share it with your friend, make it the motif challenge, right? Like come up with an idea, see where you go. So composition, repetitions, nice. Uh, variations, nice too. So I'm going to repeat this. Da 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 da. Um, I might. I'm just. I'm just using the arrow keys to move the notes around. And maybe I want to keep the same rhythmic structure, but I want to kind of play with the uh, the shape of this. Um, so maybe I want to do something like this. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste. I'm just vamping here. So. Right? And all of a sudden, that's the beginning of an idea. That's all it takes to compose. And you know what? If you made it and you had fun making it, then it is valuable and wonderful, and you should absolutely do it. So I know I'm going quickly through changing pitches. I assure you, if you've never used NoFlight, there are online tutorials. There are lessons. There are videos. There are how-tos. There is so much information that will teach you how to use NoFlight at the speed I am. So if you just join NoFlight, you'll get emails with the support center how to enter notes. I'm just typing on the keyboard, by the way, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and it just kind of enters. Um, and then I'm repeating a lot of patterns. So the R key repeats. That's kind of how I'm doing this. Um, so now if you're thinking about learning to compose, trying your hand at it for something for the first time, you have a melody and you can think about the different uh, melodic elements. Uh, harmony for one, texture, rhythm, form, right? So you can, maybe I want to make a variation of this. Maybe I want to make it an eight measure phrase. I'm going to uh, select all. I'm just going to hit the R key and it's going to uh, repeat everything. So now I have an eight measure phrase. Um, then maybe I want to add a harmony or a drum beat. I can add a drum part too, right? So let me maybe go to parts and what do we want to add next? Let's add some drums. How about some standard drum set? Um, so I can go uh, something like this. And let's add a bass drum here. And if you don't know the sounds of a, a standard drum kit, you don't have to. You can just use the arrow key just to find the sound that works. Uh, I just happen to know what they are. So then now I'm just going to create a very basic uh, pattern here. Um, and then variation is always nice. So maybe we'll just double the bass here and see what that sounds like. Copy. Paste. Um, you know, I'm going to make this up. See, now I'm just having fun. I forgot I'm on a webinar and I'm actually just composing music, literally, because it's fun, right? So, variation. And look, if you want to uh, keep going with it and you say, you know what, I've created something kind of fun, uh, why don't I add another part? I'm going to add a trumpet part. And you know what? Let's drag this trumpet part on top where the trumpet part always belongs. You can drag and drop right here. And now um, I'm just going to record, right? I'm just going to have fun. So I can actually notation and recording all mixed together. Why not? Here we go. Let's see what happens. Um, So I just kind of played along. There's a recording. And that's another great way to think about it. So if you're composing and you're looking for another element, a counter melody, something to go along, and you want to try it, you know, grab your instrument, play along, find something. And like of all that nonsense, I was just kind of doodling. There's a couple things I kind of liked. Um, at one point, I think I played come on, I lean, do da 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 do do dee. So I probably don't want to go that. But um, if you find something you like while doodling, Find it, notate it, and keep going, right? That's what composition is. Doodle, see what works, play, have fun, right? So you can totally do that. Um, I'll show you one more little trick because I'm sure I've given you enough ideas to kind of go and, and, and have fun for a while. The last piece I'll show you is, um, is uh, you can actually sync a YouTube video 
to a, uh, a file in NoteFlight, and you can create these experiences that are a combination of video and music together. And this just takes it to a whole other level. Now, uh, there's lots of uses here, right? You can, um, first of all, like you can, uh, what I'll show the first is I just took a song from the pop library. Um, it is a little ironic because we all feel on our own right now, like Eponine, we're all home. So uh, we could name it to quarantined, pretending that we're outside. Um, but you can call, uh, but uh, you can take these and, and re, of course, change the lyrics. In this case, I'm going to actually sync it to the actual audio in the video, and then we're going to talk about all sorts of extensions you can do. So I've just, you know, uh, this is a little cooking show-esque. I happen to have this pulled up, and I'm just going to copy the YouTube link, and I'm going to go back to NoteFlight, and there's a feature called Sync Audio right here. And I'm going to hit it. It's going to put in this YouTube video, and ta-da, ta-da, there it is. Now I can go in, and I can actually sync the YouTube video uh, by by aligning the beginning of each measure, and now I can create a playback experience. So I'll, I'll show you a little bit of how this works. So you can use the uh, the measure button here or the M key. I think the key on the computer is always easier for me, so I'm going to use that. So here's how this works. So you might have to catch right where the melody starts. second measure. And this is a great exercise too. Even for students, like just to, to be able to follow a score and just sync up, this is a great exercise in itself. So you could do this for your students, you just have them do it. Right, and you kind of see this little rebato there, so you have to listen. So I'm looking at the score. A little dramatic for TV, aren't we? Uh, I'll go ahead and stop. So you could go through the whole score and you can line all these up, right? So the cool thing is, is now the audio of what you hear is actually the video. So I'll go back. Let me just hit save real quick. And um, I'll go back to the beginning. And let's just play from the beginning. And the cool thing is you can start in any measure. It'll play from the video timing. So notice there was a few seconds of the video before the before I started, and it's okay. It starts right where I started the video. So the cursor is going to follow each measure. And you can jump around. So you can have this synced, right? So now this becomes a play along. Um, this could also be, in fact, you could, you know, work on something that you have notated. You could record yourself, video yourself performing it, and then sync your live performance uh, to the, the note flight score. So you can show people, look, here's the music. I mean, even if you compose something, like I would love, if you do this, please send it to me. I'd make my heart so happy. John at noteflight.com. If you would compose a piece of music, video yourself playing it, uh, and then just uh, sync the video to it and just share it with your family and share it with your friends and say, look, here's a video of me playing this. Here's the music. Here's the whole package. And you can take these videos and you can expand them up top. You can even take the music and put it in what we call strip view so it scrolls along. So now we have this great little um, video piece, right? And again, you could take, you could combine all of these elements. You could compose a counter melody to this, have it play along. You can also record along with it. So let's say um, I just want to add another part. I'll just kind of take it all, you know, oops, I'm, I was just going to put trumpet, I said part, I typed what I was saying. Um, so let's add this up here. I'm adding a part, so maybe I can just um, practice recording. Or I could have recorded over the voice part, doesn't matter. But I can go record. You can actually record along with the video. So now I'll just start a measure before, and we can just practice record. We do not want the metronome on if we do this. Definitely no metronome because we're following the video. So it'll it'll do the count off, but it won't. It is very confused because I stopped at mid mid process. So let me flip this over again. See, I got through a whole whole webinar without one technology faux pas. It would not 
be fun if I if I didn't have this opportunity. So let's see if I can make it work this time. Uh, yeah. See if it wants to do it this time. So it should start second measure with the video. Oh, I turned the mesh off. forgot to turn the metronome off properly, but you can now have a recording of you playing along with a synced video to a musical score. I'm just trying to bring all these elements together um, because I think it's really, really cool to just see how all these pieces come together. Um, let me see if I can turn the screen share off and go full screen. So I know I threw out a lot of ideas. Um, I know I got distracted and just started playing a little bit because I was having fun, which is what music should be. But what I wanted to do is go through and show you just each of those examples is just one uh, use case of an idea that can be 100 assignments. So for directors on here, I hope that some of those ideas are immediately useful for your students. Um, but for students, I hope you found something that's like, oh, that'd be fun to try. I just want to re uh, reemphasize that uh, there's nothing wrong with just playing with music playing instrument, composing some melodies. And if you sit here and do this for an hour and and you don't have a final product and you don't have an amazing perk for recording, that's okay. It's just fun, right? Like there's nothing wrong with playing music for fun. You don't have to feel like you have to compose something beautiful or wonderful that's never been done. It doesn't have to, so there's no reason to not do this is what I'm saying. I just wanna really, really um, emphasize that Spending 30 minutes or an hour just tinkering, you know, even if you try to transpose something, you get frustrated you're trying to figure it out. If you spend 20 minutes and you figure out how to transpose a song into the right key and get it to work for alto sax, you've learned something really valuable with music, right? Uh, so I think now is the time when you're home, you have yourself, you have your musicality, uh, you have your computer, you have all of these uh, software tools that are completely free right now. Just play and have fun and uh, enjoy yourself because that's what's really, really valuable. To me, it's like if I was gonna spend an hour playing a video game, this is my video game, right? Play, mess with music, record something, sounds good, great, doesn't sound good, that's okay. Did you have fun while doing it? That's all that matters. So um, uh, with that, I'll go ahead and close up. I'm happy to take any particular questions you have at this point. Um, I will post the link uh, here in a second to uh, a lot of people have asked like, you know, where to get NoteFlight or Soundtrap. So I will post the, the NoteFlight link for sure. Um, so you know where to go get, uh, where you go can get NoteFlight for free if you're looking for that. Um, and it's right here, ta-da. I should know it, I hope I know it. Um, oh, my dual screen action here. So now uh, I just posted in the chat. If you go to that link, um, it will, um, it, it, it gives you instructions on where to go sign up for a NoteFlight Learn demo. And we're giving everyone, when you sign up on the, the demo form in that link I gave you, um, we're, everyone will get through June 30th with all your students and all the content, no questions asked, right? So um, I'll give you the direct link to the demo form. If you just sign up for a free demo here, you'll be set up. So hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, um, um, I'm looking to, okay, there's a couple good questions here. Yeah, um, never too many crazy ideas. Um, uh, see it from the beginning. I'm sure, uh, Lisa, I'm sure this will be available for review at some point. I'm, I'm perfectly assuming this will be available to see again. Um, someone did mention about purchasing music, right? Everything I showed uh, in NoteFlight Learn is accessible digital only. Uh, I think it actually, to answer the question, there's something I should show if you'd like. Um, there is a option to um, use NoteFlight Marketplace. So if you did want to purchase and print any kind of music in this time, I, I should show you that we also have something called NoteFlight Marketplace. Now, um, I want to be clear, if you're a middle school or a younger student, you should be using NoteFlight Learn with your student, with your, uh, you should be using NoteFlight Learn uh, with your teacher. But uh, if you're a director and you're looking for adaptable music, if you go to NoteFlight Marketplace, Everything in NoteFlight Marketplace is available for purchase as a NoteFlight file. 
You can edit it. You can print it. Uh, you have so you can you can purchase it for your students. There's all the band and concert band music. Everything I showed is available. So you can also purchase this music and be able to print it and uh, you'll be able to uh, you know manipulate it and edit it for your needs. So if you're looking for something for your students um, and you know for students, there's a lot of instrumental solo stuff. So if you want to come in and look at anything for your instrument, um, you can. But also remember that all of these are note flight files. Anything can be edited for a different instrument. So yes, I could go and look at all the trumpet stuff in here. But remember, if I find a song I want to play, it's a violin part. Well, I can take the hashtags out, put flats on it, make it for trumpet. Easy cheesy, right? Um, but all the Hal Leonard like um, solo trumpet stuff is available. I mean, look, $2, right? And you can have access to, you know, this song. You can have the trumpet solo piece for – so there's a lot of stuff in here. If you're just looking for music to play and to purchase and own forever, you can do that as well. So I'm glad someone asked that question. I'm glad the viewers know more about NoteFlight than me. That's helpful. Um, so, um, yeah, the, the content libraries in NoteFlight Learn can be shared with all your students. They can't be printed, but they can be shared digitally, and every student can record their part. Um, if you want to buy the music and print it and use it, you can buy it on NoteFlight Marketplace, right? Um, because of copyright, the way because of the, the protecting rights holders, if you buy the music, you can use it yourself and you can print it, but you can't share something you've purchased because obviously that's like photocopying something you've purchased. Um, but if you want to have access to it, you can use it and you can use anything in NoteFlight Learn. Uh, that's more of like a subscription type model where. Uh, it's digital only, so you can share it as needed for your students. So we, have, we offer both options uh, because both are valid for copyright reasons. So that's why it's kind of two different things, but they work together. Um, yeah, so I see a lot of happy people here. Well, uh, if you have any follow-up questions for me, you can email me. I'll put in the chat. It's john at noteflight.com, J-O-H-N. Uh, other than that, thank you again, KHS. Thank you, Rick. Uh, thank you, Elisa and International Music Education Summit for your help. And everyone, just uh, make sure you take time for yourselves. Make sure you take time to enjoy music and uh, make sure you connect with other people as much as possible while you're home. So thank you so much, everyone.